All right, welcome back to the channel. So we got a superstar in the making fighting this weekend, Jerron Ennis, who once again reiterates that he is going after Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. But after this fight, Jerron Ennis is going to be right in position to actually force one of these guys to fight him uh, by becoming a mandatory challenger in one of these sanctioning bodies. And that is the difference between what, what the situation will be after this fight versus what it has been before. Let's chop that. Let's chop it up about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So we get to talk about another bright light in boxing. Just last week, we had Shakur Stevenson prove that he was the truth against Jamel Herring. Made me look good when he was doing it because I said that that might be a knockout. So all y'all that was talking all that nonsense in the comment section, make sure you go back and drop your apologies over there in the, over the video where I said that because, you know, a lot of y'all had problems with that. Well, just like I'm telling you with Shakur Stevenson, I've been telling y'all a while about this other kid, Jerron Ennis. I don't mean to call him a kid. He's a you know, young man, young adult, whatever, what have you. But Jerron Ennis out of, out of the great state of Pennsylvania, the city of Philadelphia, Jerron Boots Ennis is going to be fighting this weekend against a guy named Thomas Delorme. And in the interview for the fight with Thomas Delorme, Jerron Ennis reiterated that he is coming for everybody with a belt, that he thinks he's ready for these belts. And with this fight with Thomas Delorme, he's going to move himself in a position to do that. Now, why do I why do I say that? Not because Thomas Delorme is the toughest competition in the world. First of all, Thomas Delorme, I know he's coming off consecutive losses. Uh, he just lost to that guy, Stanosis, who is now the mandatory challenger for your Danny's Ugas. Right. He lost another unanimous decision before that. However, if you look at um, the, how, where Jerron Ennis is placed in the sanctioning bodies, you'll see that he is very, very close to being being in the top five or in the top three of one of them and forcing a man enforcing a mandatory fight upon one of the champions. I do believe right now Jerron Ennis before he beats Thomas Delorme is in the top 10 of every one of the sanctioned in bodies. If he beats Thomas Delorme, more than likely he's going to rise in the rankings in all of those in all of those um, uh, sanctioned in bodies and is going to be there to be uh, for there for a mandatory shot. I don't think that, that Jerron Ennis is in a situation seeing as he's fighting on the PBC cards um, where he's going to get blackballed by a promoter and, a, and prevented from getting a shot, right? If he was not... You know, fighting on PBC, fi you know, fighting on PBC cars and fighting on fighting PBC fighters. I might say, yeah, you know, maybe he won't get a shot because he's too good. But in this particular case, I don't think that that's I don't think that's the case. I think that they will push him into a mandatory position sooner than later, especially if what he does it with Thomas Delorme uh, merits it. Now, for me. If he goes in there against Thomas Delorme and he wins a decision against Thomas Delorme, I'll be like, all right, I don't know about that because he should beat Thomas Delorme by a decision. That you can see coming in. But the question for the, for, for the fight with Com Thomas Delorme for me is whether or not he's going to knock out Thomas Delorme because that has not happened since Terrence Crawford fought Thomas Delorme and Thomas Delorme got a TKO. Although Thomas Delorme has not you know, one, I think he might have won one out of his last five fights. I think one of them was a draw. One victory, three losses, and a draw, if I recall, if I call correctly. Even though he's not gotten the wins, he has not been stopped in any of those fights. He's gone the distance in those fights. And he is a very, very solid fighter out of Puerto Rico. He's now, you know, he's clearly a gatekeeper at this point in time. But if Jerron Ennis walks in there and Jerron Ennis bowls him over and makes it looks like look makes it look like a one-sided fight i'm gonna get his dude credit and, and make the argument that he needs to go up in the rankings and that more than likely he's going to be ready for a championship fight because as i look through the rest of the guys who you know in the rankings uh in, in any of the major rankings at, at 147 pounds there's not a lot of guys that don't have belts that really really stand out as being significantly better for thomas delorme because i was thinking you know where does he go from here and the obvious ones are you know they're obvious ones that would be better than 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 delorme right which are stenosis right who's going to be fighting 
um, who's going to be fighting Ugas, who's another uh, con uh, another contender. There's Danny Garcia. There's you know Keith. There's Keith Thurman. Right. There's um, Jamal James. Guys, maybe guys like Ray. Maybe guys like Ray Robinson. Um, but I don't know whether or not those fight those guys are significantly better than Tom Thomas Delorme. Thomas Delorme, I think, is a very, very solid fighter, a, definitely a gatekeeper, but a solid fighter. And plus, you know, with the skill sets. And, but again, if it winds up being a fight where Thomas Delorme gives them pushback and w is winning rounds, you know, things like that, then I think it might be OK. Pump the brakes on on Jerron getting a championship fight right away. But if he goes in there and he does and he treats Thomas Delorme like he treated um, Sergey Lipinitz and like he treated the guy, like he treated a uh, guy, what's the name, the guy's name, Abreu, you know, treat, if he goes in there and there's no difference between how he handles them and uh, Delorme and how he handles Abreu, then you know with him, you just have a guy that is significantly a higher level skill than, the, than them. And it might be ready and he very well might be ready for a championship fight. Now there's some time there's obviously going to be some time, you know, between when he's able to do that because of what's going on at 147. You know, you have the fight. I don't think a a, a mandatory is coming up for the WBO for a while because if I if I'm right, um it's not been that long since Terrence Crawford fought for his WBO mandatory. I think the IBF mandatory, I think that there's the IBF mandatory that might have already been named uh, in the guy from Eastern Europe for, for Terrence Crawford, I mean, for um, for Errol Spence Jr. So, and then obviously these guys are going to, and oh, excuse me, for the WBA, they got that whole tournament going on over there with Stanosis, Ugas, uh, Butiev, and, um, and Jamal James. So that one's pretty much locked up. The WBC, that mandatory, I do believe, was Danny Garcia. Uh, Danny Garcia was a mandatory for Errol Spence Jr. And, you know, so there may be some time with that. But, you know, as far as him being ready, all I need to see out of out of Jerron Ennis is a knockout, a significantly one-sided fight with Thomas Delorme. If he gets Thomas Delorme out of there, I'm going to be like, this kid is ready. And I don't think that I'm, I don't think I'm being premature. I will not think that I'm being premature on it. Again, if there's any struggle with Thomas Delorme and he's taking him a while to figure it out or whatever, then maybe because, you know, obviously this is a guy that, that Jerron Ennis should beat, man. But I'm feeling again, I feel about Jerron Ennis the same way that I'm now feeling about Shakur Stevenson, that you really, that we really do have a guy that is a different level of fighter because of the way that he fights you know similar to what i said about shakur stevenson last week where Shaka where shakur stevenson proved to me that he could walk a guy down stand right in front of him slip his punches really not get hit and beat him down up close or if he needed to against a, a guy that's very aggressive he could he could move and fight from the outside and just pick the pick the guy apart same thing with Jerron Ennis in that regard. So I think that he's a good matchup with Errol Spence. He's a good matchup with Terrence. He's a good matchup with Terrence Crawford. I think right now he beats Danny Garcia. I think right now he'll probably beat Keith Thurman. Um, uh, I'm not so sure on whether it beat Errol Spence or it will beat Terrence Crawford. But look, man, if he can if he can get a step up fight and get in a position, I think he's got as good a, good a chance as anybody else does. And that's really what it comes down to get to get into a championship fight, right? It's not always like, you know, do you think this guy can beat? Because a champion is going to be the favorite if he's a if he's a significant champion. But if a contender is better than everybody else out there, then he's the guy that gets the fight. And right now, I just don't think there's very many people out there that are better than Jerron Ennis. And I think he can prove it by by running through uh, Thomas Delorme, not beating him, you know, in a, in a nip and tuck fight or whatever, but just totally outclassing him, stopping him, you know, making him quit in his corner, something like that against a, a solid guy like Thomas Delorme. I think it should set him up in the rankings for that. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. Make sure you let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that amount, peace.